Hi, Phyllis here from SouthernFrugal.com. This afternoon I'm going to be fixing some stuffed cabbage leaves and uh, of cabbage rolls. I'm not sure what y'all call them, but I just call them stuffed cabbage. Um, and we're going to use some uh, lean ground uh, chuck to stuff it with rice, a little bit of Italian parsley. I'm going to show you that. I freeze my parsley like that that I'm going to be using for cooking or putting it in soup or whatever and that way I can take it out and have enough that's you know at least a couple of tablespoons that's still somewhat frozen but guess what I used my little um, ceramic type knife to cut it up while it was still frozen so these work really great you just got to be really careful with them. Alright the other thing it's going to take this is about a cup and a half of red onions. Now I did this in my little Vidalia Chop Wizard. Now I do have a, um, a little icon on there for Amazon where you can get these. They make chopping onions and a lot of other stuff just like that. You can make it. Alright, so we've got our ground chop. I, I just freeze mine in patties even though I rarely make hamburger patties with them. I usually do something else. I've got my burner on high because I want some brown on this meat. So I'm putting a paper towel over it so all that grease doesn't splash out because I've got the burner on high so it's going to be doing some splattering. I'm using the Savoy cabbage for the stuffed cabbage thing. You can use regular cabbage. I just particularly happen to like this. And this is organic. We got this at uh, the uh, Whole Foods Market. And um, I've got a pot, a really big pot, look here, there, of water, and it's almost to the boil. So I'm going to drop this in for just two or three minutes, just until I am able to easily pull off those outer leaves. And the other thing I'm going to drop in there is I've got about, let's see, one, two, three leaves of parsley left from our smoothies. And I've got them in water so they don't wilt. I'm going to drop those in there too and I'm going to try to incorporate these inside the cabbage leaves because the taste is very similar and I don't want to waste these. So that will make it good. And we're going to um, try to make a little red wine sauce because this is um, just like the first time I had um, the cabbage rolls was at a, it was a little steakhouse but we went to lunch sometimes. Um, when I worked up at the city of Newport News, that was when it was located in Hilton Village. Some of y'all know where that is. But anyway, uh, they had the stuffed cabbage in a wine sauce. And it, wasn't, it was just more like really wine, but it, it, they had cooked in it, so they were really, really good. So anyway, we're just going to uh, go ahead and fix the rolls, and uh, cabbage rolls, and then we're going to just pour a little bit of wine and water over them bake them in the oven. So you just put them in the oven, walk away for an hour, and they're ready. But I do like my beef, um, you know, with, with some brown on it, rather than just put it in there raw and let it cook in the oven. I prefer to have some brown on it, because I like the way it tastes then. Alright, so our water's boiling. I can already smell that um, the patties are getting brown. So I'm going to have to turn those over, and the grease is going to go everywhere, so I have to move my camera. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop my cabbage in for probably about three minutes so I'll be able to get the leaves off. So we'll be back. Okay, I've gotten up the first side of my hamburger a little bit brown. It doesn't have to be much brown, but I want some brown on it. So I'm going to also go ahead at this point and drop my onions in while I'm cooking the second side here a cup and a half of red onions and you can use any type of onions. And I just want everything cooked a little bit and once it cooks for a little while I'm going to uh, drain some of that grease off and then I'm going to add two cups of rice and that's going to be my stuffing for my cabbage leaves. Alright so we're going to check our cabbage leaves now. And let's see how they're doing. Right there they are. And also my kale leaves. Now I'm sure that they're done. Let me move them closer. 
sorry about the jiggling. There they are. All right, let's have a look at those. I'm going to coat just a few more little minutes. Hopefully I'll be able to get several leaves off that cabbage. All right, we'll be right back when those get soft enough to take off of there. Okay, I think that my uh, kale is certainly pliable enough, so I'm going to take that up, put it over in a little uh, pan I've got over here, and let that drain a little bit. And then I'm going to take the cabbage out of here. Okay, now at this point, I'm probably going to be able to get, let me back you off a little bit there. I'm probably going to be able to get about four of the leaves off. And I just take my scissors, go down to the base of it, and cut it off. Now they're very hot. There's what it looks like. See how pliable that is? And that's what you're after. Now I'm placing them over on a cloth to drain. Alright, here's the next one. Cool down just a little bit. There's the next one. This is organic, so we got a few little bug holes in it. But they are quite pretty. Now the oh, burn my finger. Oh, oh. Turn this over. There's the next one, isn't that pretty? And they look very pretty in the um, Pyrex dish I'm going to bake them in. Alright, I think I'm going to be able to get enough off of this without putting it back down in the hot water. There's the next one. See how pretty that is? Alright, I've got another one coming here. I think my, hem, my ground chuck is ready to be taken up. Isn't that pretty? There you go. Got a bunch of dogs in here running around. I'll take a couple of little ones off also. Because I'm not sure, you know, how this will work out as far as the number. I never really counted them before, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take this off too. Now the, the balance of this cabbage, you can just go ahead and cook, you know? See, this makes a much smaller one. All right, now we want to uh, dry these leaves off over here, and then uh, as soon as our uh, hamburger gets more brown, then we're going to add the other ingredients. But the first thing I'm going to do is drain all of the grease that I can get off of this hamburger and the onions. All right, so we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I wanted to show you how I get the grease off of these hamburgers and onions. See all this down here in the corner? I've got the pan actually sitting cocked up on my other uh, little Pyrex plate back here. And I just let it sit there. We'll probably give it about five minutes. And most of that oil is going to drain down into this corner. Then I just take a paper towel, and two or three paper towels, and just let it uh, soak up all this grease here and then I'll be ready to mix in my rice and my other ingredients. So we'll be back. This is just a good way to allow the grease to, you know, come out of the meat or whatever you're cooking by just tilting the pan and uh, pushing all your meat and whatever up to one side and a lot of that grease will come down in the corner. All right, we'll be back when this cools off. Okay, we are back and I wanted to show you all this. This is about three of those little, you know, half paper towels cheap ones really. See how it soaks up all of the greases in there. Alright, so now we're ready to uh, make our filling. So let me see if I can get this a little bit better here. There you go. Now everything's all cool. Let me move this pan. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is crumble my hamburger all up. And I'm just going to use my hands to do that. 
and see how it's still kind of pink on the inside because it didn't have to be done. I just wanted some of that brown on there. Can you see that brown in the pan? Let's see. Now there, can you see that? That's what makes it taste really, really good. That brown, where you've browned this meat. And the meat is still pretty juicy. And I'm sure there's still some fat in it, but not as much as there was. And my onions are partially cooked. Again, you want this all kind of scrunched up. And of course, you could go ahead and, you know, fry out the hamburger and scrunch it up as you were doing, as you were frying it. Now I want to get that black up off that pan because I want that taste in with the uh, meat. So any little tidbits that are on the pan, I'm going to scrape them up. All right, got to get them, all of it. All right, so now I'm going to add two cups of cooked rice. And this is the jasmine rice, which is a sticky rice. And this was cooked a day ago or two days ago. I don't remember, but it's in the refrigerator. And of course, it's very cold. So I'm mixing that all in with my hamburger. Make sure I don't have any great big chunks of hamburger in there even though that probably wouldn't be a bad thing. All right. I think we've got it. There's a big chunk. All right, now I'm going to add in my chopped Italian parsley. Just jump that in. It was previously frozen. And I chopped it up with my little ceramic knife. I'm going to also add in my favorite, a little bit of teriyaki sauce. You could use Worcestershire sauce if you wanted to. Just a couple of tablespoons in there. And some salt. And I put right much because of that rice, because we don't cook our rice um, in salty water. We actually, um, there's a long stem. We actually salt our rice after it's cooked on our, and when we have it on our plate. So the rice definitely needed some salt. Okay, now we've only got one more ingredient to add, so hold on. We're going to add some paprika, if I can find it. There it is. Just regular paprika. And I'd say a good teaspoon or so, maybe a little more. All right. Now we got everything in here, and this is what we're going to use to put inside the cabbage leaves, and then we're going to roll them up. Smell it. it smells very good. In fact, you could almost eat it like this. Make sure that parsley's all mixed in everywhere. All right, all right, so we're gonna have to position the camera over on the other side, and I need to go wash my hands, and we're gonna be ready to roll this up into the cabbage leaves, so hold on. All right, we are back and ready to uh, roll up our uh, cabbage leaves. So we're gonna start out, we might as well start out with the biggest one. See how it naturally bends? That's the way you wanna uh, place uh, the outside where the leaf would be down because it's going to naturally bend like that. And I just take a good spoonful, and this is a big spoon, so that would probably be, I don't know, at least a, two, maybe three big tablespoons. And so what you want to do is first roll them up this way, then bring the sides over. Why don't we do this? Since these leaves are not as big as regular cabbage leaves, let's take the sides in first. And then we'll bring the top in, kind of crunch them in there, and then bring that thickest part over the bottom. I don't like that, so we're not doing it that way, even though that would probably be better. So we're going to take the big fat part of it in first, then roll the side in over that. 
and then bring the top flap in, kind of scrunch it in there. All right, now once you've got it there, you'll need just one toothpick to hold it in. And just get all through those leaves if you can. And remember, you've only uh, cooked them in there. Certainly no more, I'd say, than three minutes will make them come apart. There's what it looks like. Can y'all see that? All right, so let me do one more. All right, again, you want it so, see the cabbage would have been, the leaf would have been on the cabbage like that. You want this side down. Putting in a good, probably three tablespoons, or in my case, I'm using a great big spoon. We're going to turn this thickest part over first, then bring the sides up, much like you would uh, roll up a spring roll. Bring the next side in and then bring this right over the top like that and then all you have to do is take the toothpick make sure you got it through those leaves because you don't want it to come apart there's what it looks like on that side can y'all see that see the camera looks dark to me the screen but maybe it'll show up better than i think there's the other side so now i'm going to go ahead and roll the rest of these up and uh, when I get through, we'll come back and I'll let you see what, how I cook something else in with this. So hold on. All right, we've got all of our cabbage rolls rolled up. And uh, I started, let me turn this around. I started, got the biggest ones down here and they work up to the smaller ones. And one little leaf that's split. But around the edge is where I've got those uh, little kale leaves. I cut out the... Uh, you know the big spine in them and so they're just crumpled up in there just to make it look pretty and this is slices of butternut squash now I'm going to use some Old Bay seasoning right over the top of those squash and the cabbage leaves I'm not using much but some right over the top of everything alright that ought to do it all right, now I'm going to pour in about a half a cup of water, or maybe just a little bit more, about three-fourths of a cup. And by the way, I think this is a 9 by 13 Pyrex dish. Now I'm going to add some red wine, and this is really all I've got, so that looks like about three-fourths of a cup. So I'm just going to gently pour that over the cabbage leaves. And the butternut squash and the whole business. All right. All right, that was all for that wine bottle. All right, so now we're going to bake this in the oven. Let me smell of it. It already smells wonderful. All right, so I'm going to bake this in the oven at 375 degrees for an hour. And you will need to cover it up. Let me give you one more look at it. There's what it looks like. So bake it for 300, at 375 degrees for an hour or until the cabbage leaves are tender and the butternut squash are tender. Because remember, really, most of, of the, uh, what's inside the cabbage leaves is pretty well cooked. All right, now, here's what you need to do. Just put one little hole right in the middle because you want some of that steam to stay in there because that's what's going to really cook that cabbage and make it tender and also what's going to make the uh, butternut squash tender. All right, when this gets done, we'll be back. We'll be over on the other side where we got a little more light. See you in about an hour. I wanted to show you all what I do when I have anything left over like this. Now, this is the center of that little cabbage, and I've just cut the little uh, center core out of it. And I'm just going to chop it up just a little bit. And it's pretty well done because after I took all the leaves off that I needed for the uh, cabbage rolls, I just uh, put this back in the water and let it cook a little longer. So I've got me a little freezer carton. And this is what it, the way I make little meals like this. And then when you run across those days that you know you can't figure out what to cook, or you're hungry and instead of going to get a hamburger you can pull one of these little uh, meals 
out of your freezer. I've probably got four or five of them in there right now of different things. And I don't label them, but I, I never uh, put one of these meals in the freezer unless it's good, okay? All right, now this is the leftover, uh, you know, where I, the leftover from the cabbage roll. So I'm going to put that right on top of the little cabbage, which is very tender now because I actually cooked it a little longer. Put all that in there. And that meat is pretty well cooked, but when we uh, take this meal out of the freezer, um, we would um, be cooking it in the microwave a little bit anyway to thaw it out. All right, so now there's a little piece of meat there. I'm just going to put some ketchup over it first. And we'll put a, a little more Old Bay over it. And then I'm just going to put a little ketchup on it. Now, once you warm this up in the microwave, it'll be really, really good. Now, how do I know that? Because it's good right now. So, I don't ever freeze anything unless it's good. I mean, if it's not good, there's no point putting it in the freezer because it still won't be good when you take it out. All right, so there it is. And if we're not very hungry, this would actually be enough for both of us. You know, like for supper one night or when you're sitting there watching TV and say, oh, I want something to eat. I can just pull one of these out of the freezer and heat it up. And, you know, it tastes really good. So there's what it looks like on the side. The cabbage is on the bottom and the hamburger and the rice is right on top. And I just put some uh, spaghetti, I mean, uh, some ketchup on it because I certainly don't have any wine sauce right now. So put that over it. All right. We'll be back when uh, everything's done. Okay, our cabbage rolls are ready, and uh, I just wanted to show you how to check for doneness in them. They did cook one hour at 375 degrees, but you want to check them. So just, you know, pick one of the uh, cabbage leaves that's got the spine on it there, and just kind of stick your toothpick down and see if it goes in easily. That way you know they're done. Also, the little butternut squash, and just check those. But after an hour, they should be done. All right, so I am fixing some uh, green butter beans over here. Wait a minute. Wrong way. I do that all the time. Some green butter beans, and I'm going to fix us a little bit of garlic toast from some bread I made this past week. And I'll plate this up, and we'll be back. All right, I've got the uh, cabbage stuffed cabbage rolls ready, and we're ready to eat. And some butter beans, little uh, baby lima beans, really is what they are, and the butternut squash. And I did dip a little of that wine sauce back over the uh, little cabbage leaves here, so we're getting one big one and one small one, along with some garlic toast and, of course, our iced tea. All right, there it is. We will see y'all next time. Give you a close up of that. Isn't that pretty? Close up of this one. Very pretty. All right, we will see y'all next time.